<laughs> Hello, welcome to the last week of Focus VBS. I hope you are enjoying your virtual VBS experience. So, if you got your bonus VBS bag, get out your music for today, get out your craft, and you might want to try out some of those toys in there. Everything in there is with this theme of focusing. Because where should our main focus be? Where should our main focus be, Abby? To God. Yes. So we're going to focus on God today and have fun doing it. Kelly and we are back and ready to focus. Okay, we've discovered lots of ways that we can take a closer look and grow in our relationship with God. Let's see if you can unscramble these words and remember all the different ways you can focus on God. You can focus on what you can see. Nice. <laughs> you can remember that our big, powerful God created everything and everyone we see, and he cares about what's going on in each of our lives. What else? Well, you can hear from God. You can do that by reading the Bible, whether that's on an app, on a tablet, or even in a book like this one. You can follow God's big story throughout history and discover what it means for your life today. You can talk with others about what you believe. You can ask questions and talk about God with other people who follow him. Maybe they've discovered something about God that can help you too. Or maybe as you talk about him, you can discover something new together. How else can we focus on God? You can pray anytime, anywhere, about anything. You can talk to God and be honest with him. Remember, he is always there for you, no matter what. We can do all these things to focus on God and discover more about him. And the best part is, we can choose to do them every single day. We can make a habit of living differently and focusing on God no matter what's going on around us. Today, we'll talk about one more awesome way we can focus on God that's all about the way we act every single day. <gasps> but first, jump on your feet, because it's time for us to put our focus on God and worship Him together.
company that's called Souls for Souls. And what they do is they work with people around the world to give them opportunities, not only for things for their feet, but also to make some income. You know, I read about other countries around the world that are also participating with Souls for Souls. It's not just people in the United States. I read about people in Singapore that are doing it. Singapore's way over there in the Far East, down in uh, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Cambodia area. I read about uh, people up in Canada that are doing this. I read about countries in Central America that are also participating. Anybody that has a heart and is willing to serve has the opportunity to partner with Souls for Souls to help people that are less fortunate. Not only, like I said, not only for footwear, but also for uh, business opportunities and a chance to do that. These uh, shoes are distributed just as there are countries that contribute from all around the world. These shoes are distributed to kids all around the world too. Uh, I read Honduras, Tunisia, Bulgaria. Uh, there were a couple of more too, but again, it's all about the opportunity but as these shoes are given out that we can impact communities, families, not only with the shoes, but with the gospel message that they might know about Jesus too. Here I come! Hey guys, it's me, Kyle. I didn't know if you'd recognize me without the lights on and with the flashlight, but today we are playing flashlight tag in the lab, which means I might have to... Kyle! Uh, be right back. Where are you? <laughs> Hi guys. Have any of you seen Kyle? I'm trying to catch him. You're never gonna catch me! I heard you! I heard you! Oh, wrong way. Oh. Oh. Kyle! Kyle! <laughs> Thanks for that. Man, it is crazy back there. Everything is so dark. You can't see anything. It's like it's like a maze in the lab. Uh, you're you're tripping over things. You're running. Oh, oh. Hey. Oh. I'm fine. I better uh, yeah, I better go check on her. Sorry about that. Um, okay, where was I? I was uh, talking about lights, flashlight tag. Where else? I am? God, oh, no. uh, Kyle, oh. are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, Wilson, Wilson just got me. <laughs> I'm the king. <laughs> okay, uh, King. Hey, do you do you mind uh, putting the spotlight on me real quick? Okay, yeah. Perfect. Light illuminates everything that we see, and even some things that we can't. So today on A Closer Look, we're talking about just that. Stay tuned. Ah! Samantha? Samantha? When we think about light, we usually think about lamps or the sun, but there's so many different ways to use light. Like, uh... Kyle, I am... Hey, hey, no spoilers, please. Kyle, I am your... <laughs> <laughs> light isn't just something out of bulbs or from the sun. Light is also lasers! Oh. <laughs> but what good do lasers even do? Well, they look cool. But looking cool isn't a reason to be talking about it on this show. I mean, this is science that we're dealing with here, people. What's the practical application? First, uh, the fact that you care about the content of this show means the world to me, so thank you. And second, lasers can be used in so many different ways. It can help uh, shape people's eyes so they can see better. Oh, like uh, LASIK. 
Yeah, you know, my dad had that done before we couldn't even read a stop sign, but now we can read the newspaper over my mom's shoulder when they're in separate rooms. Wow, <laughs> exactly. And there's also LIDAR. Ooh! What's that? Well, it's basically a radar that uses lasers. So we use light to scan entire areas to take an incredibly detailed photograph that we normally couldn't see with the naked eye. Uh, check it out. Oh, look, an entire ancient city covered by trees for hundreds of years, and we discovered it using LIDAR. See, the city couldn't be seen because the trees had covered it up, but we found it with light using LIDAR. Plus, they sound super cool. Yeah, they do. <laughs> also, because high-powered lasers are accurate over long distances, we can measure things like elevation very, very... Houston? We have a problem. Very accurately. <laughs> but that's some of the small picture stuff about light. But what about the big picture stuff? Like about supporting life on our planet? Well, we're going to talk about all of that right after this. I will. Yeah, yeah. Hi guys, we're at Refuge Church doing Focus VBS. Hi. Hi. Hello guys, today we'll be playing a game of Would You Rather, so if you will, grab someone who you can play with and I'll give you 10 seconds. Alright, now that you have someone, we can begin with our first question. Have, would you rather have a pet dinosaur or a pet robot? Second question, would you rather ride on a whale or an elephant? Our third question, would you rather be the size of an ant or be the size of a mouse? Our fourth question, would you rather be covered in ants or be covered in worms? Our fifth question is, would you rather have a pink cat or a flying horse? Sixth question, would you rather be really rich or have a lot of friends? Our seventh question, would you rather have to crawl everywhere or have to hop everywhere? Now, our eighth question, would you rather have no teeth or have no hair? Our final and ninth question, would you rather take a bath in ice cubes or take a bath in tomato soup? <laughs> Good. there who are you looking at you looking at me huh you looking at me are we rolling oh <clears throat> hello I'm Kellen and we've been having a lot of fun taking a closer look at the world around us so I have a mirror here but it's not just any mirror it's a two-way mirror the way it works is that one person can see through it from the side where it's darker, and the person on the other side sees a reflection of themselves when the light is on them. So here's me, but when I stand behind it and change the lighting, can you see me now? Cool, right? I'm seeing a reflection of myself, but if we change the lights again, I see you. Cool, right? All right, well, we'll come back to that later. So our story today 
actually comes from two different books of the Bible. Now, they're both pretty famous passages. The first is from the book of Matthew, where the Pharisees are asking a question of Jesus. First, let me explain who the Pharisees were. They were a group of religious leaders who tried to honor God by following a bunch of religious rules. The problem was they focused so much on following the rules that they didn't love God or other people very well. They also didn't like how Jesus claimed to be the Son of God, and they didn't like how everyone seemed to be following after Him. When one of the Pharisees asked his question, he was really trying to put Jesus to the test and see if Jesus might say something that would get him in trouble. So he asked Jesus this question, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now the law he was referring to was the law in the Old Testament that had lots of rules. Lots of rules for all kinds of things like what kind of work you could do on certain days of the week or making sure you covered your water wells or to not eat owls. Seriously, it's in there, check it out. So Jesus answers them and says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. Jesus basically sums up the law with those four verses. There are more than 600 rules in the Old Testament, and Jesus says here what you need to do. Love God, love people. That's it. Crazy, right? But how do we love someone? I mean, what is love? The Apostle Paul had some things to say about love in the book of 1 Corinthians. Paul said, love is patient, love is kind. Love does not dishonor others. He also says that love does not look out for its own interests. Love is full of joy. It always protects, it never gives up. Love never fails. Now, that's a lot of beautiful words about love, but what does it look like in our everyday life? What does it look like for love to be patient? Okay, what if your little brother or sister has destroyed the Lego tower you built for the third or fourth time? Showing them love might mean that you're patient and that you don't get angry at them. What does it look like for love to be kind? Well, maybe there's a new kid at school or at camp and maybe they don't look or sound like you or any of your friends. It may not be easy, but to show that person love means to show kindness. Invite them to sit with you at lunch or play with you at recess, even if your other friends don't want to. What does it look like for love to never fail? That's a big one, right? To say that love never fails? Well, I don't think Paul was saying that love is always easy. It's not. And sometimes we might feel that love has failed when you try to show someone kindness or patience and they make fun of you or they ignore you. But I think maybe Paul is saying that we can't give up. And if we continue to show people love, it will change them and change us, even if we can't see it immediately. I think it's also good to remember that God is described as love and what God did by sending us his son Jesus will never fail. Even when we mess up, God still loves us, and we can show that same love to others. Here, let me show you something. So we're back at this two-way mirror. Remember that it works because of light. When you light up one side of the mirror and lower the light on the other side, the person that has the light shining on them is able to be seen. So when I shine the light on myself, I can look in the mirror and see myself. Hey, Kellen. But when we turn the light down on ourselves and we turn the light up on the other side of the mirror, we turn the light on others. We turn the focus on other people and we can see who they are and what they need. When we take a closer look at others, we're able to see them as God sees them and live for God by loving them. Pretty incredible, right? So, as you go home and as you meet new friends in the next few weeks, remember that you can live for God by showing others God's love. And keep a lookout because there are so many things to learn about God when you take a closer look. I'll see you guys next time.
do you ever wonder how we got this amazing world around us? It's all because of four little words. Let there be. Oh, I know this one. Oh, light. <laughs> Light is the main source for life on our planet. Light is the sole source for food creation on our planet. For instance, we need light to grow our fruits and our vegetables. But have you ever wondered why? It's all because of a little process known as photosynthesis. Here's how it works. The sun shines on us, and the plants use that energy to turn carbon dioxide, which we cannot breathe, into oxygen. And oxygen is what we breathe. So next time you take a deep breath, think a plant. Because plants are pretty important. Thanks, plants. We need light to see, yes, but light comes in a spectrum that makes our world beautiful. For instance, if we didn't have this various spectra of light, our world might look like. I don't like it. Oh man, I got Neapolitan. How am I gonna know which one's the chocolate? But because we do have different kinds of light, our world looks like. Figured it out. <laughs> From clean solar energy to maintaining the Earth's temperature to letting us know when to go to sleep at night, light plays a huge role in our everyday life. Everything we do here at A Closer Look requires light. After all, we need light to take a closer look. Oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Did you uh, leave in any ice cream for me? Ah, uh, we left you a little strawberry. <laughs> a plant that gets the right amount of sunlight will thrive and grow. <laughs> I am so full of sun energy, I could not be more psyched. <laughs> but if the plant doesn't get the right amount of light, what? People can be the same way. Sometimes when a light isn't shining on someone, we can't see the details of them in their life. That's why we gotta do everything we can to light others up, shining a light on others and showing them love. Well, uh, hey, Wilson, can, can you fix that spotlight, please? Got it. When I shine a light on Samantha, I can see how enthusiastic she is. And I can also see that she likes it when others are just as enthusiastic as her. <laughs> I know that she gets excited about even my craziest idea. <laughs> Way to bring the fun, Samantha! Oh, hey, thanks, Kyle! <laughs> and when I shine a light on Wilson, I can see how smart he is and how he makes all of us smarter. It's true. <laughs> and I won't let his grumpiness get in the way of telling me so. Oh. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to shine a light on your friends? How are you seeing them better? Well, guys, that's it for this week. Thank you for joining us and for taking a, a closer, closer look. look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to. I wanna... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, high five again. Ready? High five! You're doing it! Charlie! I did not secure that, guys. I am so sorry. This is my faith. This is my focus, all of my days, I know where my hope is, I live it loud, I shout the chorus, because I know, oh you're always for us, and even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you, I will believe, believe, and even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you, I will believe, 
and keep on looking, looking, looking to you. For where I'm going, knowing you go there too. I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you. I fix my eyes on you. I know where my hope is. I live it loud. I shout the chorus because I know, oh, you're always for us. And even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you. I will believe, believe. And even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you. I will believe and keep on looking. Alright guys, since today is our last day, we got a bonus prize for you. If you guys can comment below how many items are in this bucket, you'll win the whole thing. Take a good look at it. And don't forget to comment below how many items you think is in this. Jesus said that the most important thing you can do is to love God and love others. You can do that by treating others the way you want to be treated. Think of others instead of just thinking of yourself. Put your focus on what God has done for you, and then live your life differently because of it. You can live for God by loving others. You can put the focus on other people and share God's love with them every day. Here's a question for you. How do you focus on others? I bet you've got some great ideas about that. Talk about them with whoever is there in your house or apartment with you. <laughs> I've had a great time with you guys these last few days. Thanks for hanging out and joining us here at Focus. Hello, my name is Yolanda and we are going to do the crafts for today. We have Abby who is going to help us do the crafts uh, for preschoolers. And Giselle is going to show the crafts for uh, elementary children. So have fun and let's see what Abby, is, what Abby does for us. She's coloring the window clings. And once they are colored, she will stick, you can stick them in the windows or in a mirror, wherever you want to put them. If, uh, if you have markers or you have um, Sharpies that you want to let your children use, 
be feel free to do it because it works much better with those. Okay. In the meantime, Giselle is going to show us how to do a nice uh, keychain. And uh, she's going to be uh, showing in detail how to start knotting it to see the end result. But this is the end result, and as you can see in your, in your bag, there is a, a cross that is included. That is the end result, very nice. Uh, the cross, of course, although the paper shows that the cross goes at the end, it's difficult to put the string through the cross, so we decided to put it up front in the ring. Anna, we've completed her uh, coloring and clung the figures to the mirror. Thank you so much for joining us in this crafts. I hope you had fun. I hope to see you soon. <laughs> Guys, I've got one question for you. Have you ever had an experience with a friend that honestly was really only a friend when it was convenient for them? Maybe they only wanted to play with you when one of their other friends wasn't around, or they only wanted to spend time with you when they were bored and didn't have anything better to do. It doesn't sound like much of a friend, does it? You know, when the Pharisees asked Jesus in Matthew 22, they said, what is the greatest commandment? He said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the question that we've asked or we've answered throughout this video today is what is love? How does God define love? And it's not doing the minimum. It's not loving God or loving other people only when it's convenient or only when I don't have anything better to do or only when it's easy. But we will truly live for God when we love others the way God would want us to. Not asking what's the minimum I need to do, but how, God, how can you unleash me to love my family, my friends, my church, and ultimately to love God. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of our VBS Focus uh, Summer, really. Uh, we've had an amazing time, and we're looking forward to doing more events and things like this in the future with so many uh, things changing in our world around us. Uh, who knows what ministry will look like in the future, but here's one thing that you can do right here and right now. You can pray, you can love God, and you can love others. I'm so glad we were able to focus in on God and His Word this summer, and I can't wait to see what we're going to do next. Love you all. See you soon. God bless.